25 Minecraft things you'll probably never see. Minecraft is built off random generation, which means that some sites are a rare find, which is a shame because some of these special somethings are a real sight to see. So today we're taking a glance at these odd picks so they don't go unnoticed. And hey, the YouTube librarian bets that you can't subscribe to the channel before this pig hits the ground. So to prove them wrong, saddle that red sub button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Number one. Now, when we're talking about rare finds in Minecraft, the first thing that comes to mind is the different structures. And while it's already a roll of dice to find just one of these, how about two of them put together? No joke, on this seed we can see both the desert pyramid and its pillager outpost roof, which is a weird combo for sure, and it probably adds more stress than necessary when you're trying to raid the temple. But I guess if you don't find emeralds down in the chest, there's always another supplier up top. Number two, I'm sure you're familiar with this white whale, the so-called mushroom fields biome. And as the rarest non-variant biome in the game, finding one of these is tough enough of a task to pull off. But if you find something like this, it might just be even rarer. You see, normally these would spawn as an island of sorts, surrounded by ocean on all of its fronts. But here, we've got forest around the perimeter. So I guess if you get tired of all the fungus among us, then at least your log cabin's always a short walk away. Number three, in any survival run, there comes a time where you've got to buckle down and find that end portal. And while it's usually a tall order, this map might just be the easiest I've seen. Here, we barely even need the eyes of Ender, because as soon as we're in range, it's pretty obvious where the stronghold starts. Which is a cool sight for a lot of reasons, and it definitely helps you to start your search for that last dimension. So if you're looking for some extra help on your next run, the seed might be the solution. Number four, if you've played around with Minecraft's fast travel, then you're well aware that ice and boats go great together. And while that's true, this just seems like overkill. Apparently, it's possible for a shipwreck to not only generate this high above sea level, but also on top of a glacier. Which, if you ask me, looks like proof of a pretty lousy captain. Or who knows, maybe this is an alternate timeline where Titanic and the iceberg made amends. And whatever lore you choose to believe, the site is still arguably cool to see. Number five, it only takes one look at the Minecraft subreddit to see just how many people make builds for their significant others. And while that is sweet, maybe you want something a bit more unique for yours. Well, if that's the case, Minecraft's world generation might just be your perfect wingman. Now, down on the surface, it doesn't look like too much out of the ordinary. Just a forest next to a mesa. But from above, it's clear to see that there's a heart carved right into the spawn location, which proves that even the Badlands biome might still have some good left in it. Number six, finding diamonds can be a competitive subject. And I know that I always race my friends to see which one of us can get the achievement first on a new world. And sure, that's a fun contest, but this might take the cake for the bragging rights. As you can see, in certain versions of the game, it's possible to find a vein of diamonds the size of 14 blocks, which I think is downright insane. And if you pack along your Fortune 3 pickaxe, then this might just be enough to fuel you up on diamonds for the next few updates. Number seven. At some point, I think we've all wanted to live in a penthouse with a view. And while in the real world that carries a hefty price tag, it seems the pillagers might have found the emeralds to make it happen. Under the right conditions, it's not only possible to come across a woodland mansion, which might I add is already rare, but then also find one that's as tall as this. And folks, while this could happen on an amplified world, as you can see from this seed, we can even have one that occurs naturally, giving us quite the wild sight. Number eight. When you're trying to optimize your Minecraft world, then a mob spawner is a must have. But while most of us settle to find just one or two of these for our purposes, user Neil4879 found eight of these within a single area. Man, what's even better is that they're all within range for the player to trigger the spawning. So if you've got the time to clear out all the blocks and design the mechanics, this might just lead to one of the craziest mob farms in the game that you could make without a world eater. Number nine, Minecraft has its fair share of rare biomes. And while usually we'd picture an ice spikes or mushroom fields biome for that, what if I told you there's something even rarer? Now, I get it, on first glance, it doesn't appear too different from a jungle nearby. But what's actually happening here is that this is what's called a modified jungle edge biome. And this biome type only occupies a millionth of the total overworld, which makes this a thousand times rarer than a mushroom field. This might be the only one we ever see. Number 10. I'll admit it, throwing eggs in Minecraft is a fun pastime. Though when I'm chucking all those eggs, I have wondered, what are the odds to get a chicken from every single egg in a single stack? Given that there is a one out of eight chance for at least one chicken to come from a given egg, then we can take that to the 16th power and figure that there's a chance of over one in 281 trillion for all of those eggs to be lucky. And then folks, if we try to figure the odds of getting 64 chickens from those 16 eggs, we get something a whole lot messier too. Number 11. Unless you're looking for a green bed, finding a Minecraft cactus isn't a big priority. Though that doesn't stop folks in the community from searching the deserts. Because as you can see, these cacti can grow a lot taller than we're used to. And the best part is that it can all happen naturally. Now, while there have been some impressive picks like this eight block cactus in the 1.16 update, the clear goliath for this has to be this then record breaking 20 block tall cactus. So while a taller one might still happen in theory, this is still ridiculous to see. Number 12. Possibly any speedrunner's least favorite part of a run is the hunt for ender eyes. 
And the reason being comes down to the amount of random luck that you need for the blaze rods and the ender pearls. So if you're fed up with wasting your RNG on those, there is another option. And no, it's not that one. But rather, it's that it's possible to find a fully loaded end portal with all of the eyes intact. And while it has been found before, you're gonna need a lot more RNG to recreate this. So maybe piglin bartering's still the way to go. Number 13. Now, I get it. Horses aren't exactly a preferred way to travel, but it's always nice to have a shiny set of armor. And having all three of them is gonna look even better. So if you're looking for all the spiffy duds for your stud, then you could always roll the dice for a situation like this. In this ultra chest in the stronghold, we've got a full set of iron, gold, and diamond horse armor variants, which if you see this, maybe take a screenshot, since there's only about a one in two million chance of it ever happening. Number 14. Upon first glance, this enderman might not seem that special. I mean, sure, it's holding a block, but plenty of endermen do that. Well, the impressive factor here has to deal with exactly what the enderman's holding. See, in the 1.16 nether update, it was made so that enderman could no longer pick up netherrack, likely to stop them from terraforming any kind of warp forest. But if you had one of these prior to the update where it could pick up the block, then it would still be holding it today, making this a rare creature for the collection. Number 15. As we know, bedrock and java have plenty of differences lying underneath the surface, and it turns out strongholds are no different. See, because java strongholds operate in a sort of ring-based system, we won't see much overlap, but in bedrock, it's all up to random chance. With a proper amount of luck, we can not only have two strongholds overlapping, but even have two portal rooms stacked like so. And the best part is that both of the portals still work, so now it's up to you to choose which one to fill out first. Number 16. Clearly, villagers are a shady bunch. I mean, why else would half of all igloos generate with a hidden basement? But while that fact's weird in its own right, I think this basement might take the cake for peculiarities. As you can see, if we follow this ladder down to the bottom, then the secret layer opens right up into a stronghold down below, which is convenient, but it also means that the trapped zombie and regular villagers will be free roaming down below. And unfortunately for that regular villager, that's only gonna end one way. Number 17. If you played around with cheats, then you've probably come across the unobtainable pig spawner. And while this is mostly a placeholder in the game's code, there is a way to have one spawn in game. And folks, the reason this happens might be even stranger than seeing it. When you see this, it means that the game tried to generate a dungeon chest and a spawner in the same block, giving us a spawner that behaves like a chest. And while this one doesn't spawn pigs, we could still move items in and out of it using hoppers, for whatever that's worth. Number 18. Mining for diamonds can be a touchy subject, especially if you didn't happen to bring your luck down with you into the caves. So if you'd rather try your RNG up on the surface, the blacksmith might have you covered. And while the most I'm ever used to seeing is three diamonds in a chest, this one beats those, and then some. After opening this up, you'll be treated to nine of the things just ready to go. And best yet, the coordinates of the chest are within render distance of zero, zero, making this the easiest diamond toolkit you're ever gonna craft. Number 19. When you're spending time in a village, the last thing that you need is hostile mobs to ruin the fun. So to keep your population count on the up and up, why don't we travel to the most peaceful biome in the game? Because even though there's not an intentional mushroom fields village in the game, that didn't stop this one from generating. And since only mushrooms and bats spawn in the area, your trading pal should live to see another day. And honestly, I'm sure the iron golems are ready for that break. Number 20. Sometimes you can hit the Minecraft seed jackpot. And call me crazy, but I think this one wins the Powerball. In this seed alone, we've got a village neighboring a woodland mansion with a ruined portal in the outskirts to boot. And folks, that's just the surface. Because if we hop underground, then we can find a mine shaft, a dungeon, and a stronghold to top it off. I mean, that's maybe two thirds of achievements in the game covered just within the same few hundred blocks. And if you ask me, that sounds too good to be true. Number 21. As some of you might know, the Vatican actually had a server in Minecraft for a time, which is a story for another day. But even if you didn't get the IP, this seed seems like the next best thing. Because while other villager non-believers might settle for one church in their village, this town has not one, but four different ones to choose from. And it cracks me up that they're all on the same path as well. So while it's not as objectively helpful as getting four blacksmith chests, I guess if you need the brewing stands, then by all means. Number 22. If you've got an interest in Minecraft building, then you know that it's a real asset to have all the wood types on hand. But in a regular world seed, you're likely to only have one or two saplings on hand. Though here, that's just not the case. See, in this world, not only are all the overworld wood types close by, but they're all within just 20 blocks of zero, zero. And I'm lazy, but even I have to admit that's a good bargain. And I'm sure your builds will thank you for starting out this well supplied. Number 23. If you ever need proof of impressive dedication in the Minecraft community, then the Minecraft seed subreddit has it in spades. And one of my favorite examples of that is their competition to find the largest natural drop in the game. In this case, the task would define just how many blocks you could fall in a natural world from one point to the other. And in an example like this, that could be as crazy as 239 blocks from point A to point B. So if you're looking for an impressive MLG save, you can't get much better than this. Number 24. Ocean monuments are nothing new to see, but something like this seems a bit more peculiar. After all, the way that this generated, it seems more like a lake monument than an 
an ocean one. Now, sure, the biome is still technically labeled an ocean, but with a ring of land on all sides, it's really hard to call it one. But I will say this makes a pretty great candidate for your next guardian farm at your base. And if you ask me, that's benefit enough to toss aside the labels, just reap the rewards. Number 25. Just as Minecraft has rare seeds to find or biomes to explore, there are plenty of rare mobs that spawn as well. And the reigning champions for those have to be these fellas, the so-called rarest things in Minecraft. So whether you find this overpowered zombie villager jockey in Java, or the panda ride in Husk and Bedrock, I think it's safe to say these picks are in a league of their own. But considering the luck that you need to find these, I'd say that the summon command is really our only chance to ever see them. And with that folks, get yourself a rare gray subscribe button down below, and have a good one, alright?